Why, hello and welcome back to Coasting the Planet. Today, Carowind sent out a survey to, I guess, season pass holders and other people that visit the park regularly, maybe. Uh, I think I got it because I was a season pass holder. Uh, regarding future attractions coming to the park, this is particularly exciting because last year, um, we saw similar surveys go out for two other Cedar Fair parks, Kings Island and, or I'm sorry, Kings Dominion and Canada's Wonderland. Um, at least those are the two I remember from last year because those two, two projects from those two um, surveys actually, from what we can tell so far, turned into real projects that are currently under construction at both of those uh, parts. So basically that's telling us that Steer Fair is really considering these projects in the near future for these parks. And so today we got surveys from Carowinds, Kings Island, and Kings Dominion, uh, two of Steer Fair's other flagship parks. I did not get those, presumably because I am not season pass holders at those parks, but I've already seen what's been posted of them um, on Reddit and stuff. I actually just got back from Dollywood about an hour ago and just tried to throw the setup together real quick. It didn't exactly work the way I wanted it to, so I do apologize in advance for the audio. I know it's not great. I could not figure out what to do about it. But hopefully you can suffer through and we'll have fun kind of discussing, or I'll discuss here and you can discuss in the comments about these new conceptual Carowinds attractions uh, and which ones we, we would hope to see. All right, so I went ahead and skipped most of the boring stuff like the demographics and the like, scale of one to 10, how do you feel about this word questions? And so now we're about to see some of the concepts for future attractions. And remember from what we've seen from uh, Canada's Wonderland and King's Dominion last year, um, these are actual um, concepts that they are, are actually looking to implement within the next few years, and they're trying to get some feedback. So, I mean, if you've been to Carowinds recently, especially if you have a season pass, check and see if you got this email, because I know that they're sending these out to a lot of people. A lot of people have gotten these, so um, you might have a chance to uh, to give your your uh, feedback as well. So I think I'm just going to uh, we'll just go through each. Um, I'm not going to show you all my responses in extreme depth, um, but you can see the first thing we have right up here, is well the, the giga dive coaster so the description isn't given very much it's just describing a generic dive coaster we've seen a lot of these before i've never ridden one personally i would really like to picture there i think on the left is valraven and the right is yukon striker um, which are two the two dive coasters uh, cedar fair already owns cedar point on the left canada's wonderland on the right um i mean these are these are really big crowd pleasers um when you go up the lift hill and then you have that 90 degree vertical drop these two are hyper dive coasters so in the 200 foot range which is pretty tall and when you go over the edge it'll actually hang the train and kind of suspend you just 90 degrees facing the ground for a little bit i'm sure all the coasters people out there are already pretty familiar with this but what's the big thing here is the uh 300 foot uh, dive coaster so right now the tallest is Yukon Striker, and I don't know exactly how tall it is. Okay, Yukon Striker. Um, yeah, so it's 223 with a 245 foot drop because it's into a tunnel. Um, so going all the way up to 300 foot, that's a that's a big jump for a dive coaster, and having a 90 degree vertical drop that you're going to be suspended over before you take it, um, breaking at or breaking the 300 foot mark. That sounds pretty wild. Of course, the thing with dive coasters, I have not ridden one, but from what I understand, after the drop, um, the, the rest of the elements can be a little bit hit or miss. They're just not super well-rounded rides. They kind of all revolve around the drop. But again, a 300-foot vertical drop, like, that's completely unheard of um, in the amusement industry right now. So that, that would be pretty wild. I don't know if this is necessarily what Carowinds needs because they already have like the best 300 foot coaster in the world in Fury 325. I don't really think they need another 300 foot coaster, not right now um, anyways, but it's definitely a cool idea. And I think this was on the Kings Island survey as well, maybe. Um, I think some other parks in the Cedar Fair chain would benefit from this more than Carowinds if they were looking to purchase one of these, but that's just kind of my feeling on it. Again, this doesn't really explain anything other than giving a basic description of a dive coaster, so I figured this would be a pretty coaster-focused installation. It doesn't really talk about it being like a themed experience or anything that would get me um, really excited about it or really interested. It doesn't explain how it would be different 
from other dive coasters other than 300 foot. Although I will say, I mean, there's not really any other parks with a dive coaster super close by um, to Carowinds. I think Busch Gardens Williamsburg would be the closest one. And it's not that terribly close. I mean, like Dollywood doesn't have one. Um, over Georgia doesn't have one. So I don't know. That's kind of how I'm feeling about this. Um, sounds cool. Um, for another park, I don't know if, that this is necessarily what Carowinds needs, unless all the other concepts they have to show are just are just bad. Uh, so I'll go ahead and fill in my my feedback. We'll move on to the next one here. Sorry, my contacts are bothering me. I need to go take them out real quick. Um, but anyways, the next uh, concept that they're showing us is a water coaster, which I knew this was coming somewhere along the, the the line. So let me just see what it says. Okay, so this one you can see we actually have like computer renders of the ride here instead of photographs of just other rides of its type. Um, so I don't know if this is just a generic computer render like from Mock Rides or Instrument or whoever the manufacturer is, or if this is specifically what Carowin is looking to have done. Um, but yeah, water coaster concept is pretty simple. It's it's like a um, shoot the shoot boat with roller coaster wheels. It runs on some roller coaster track. At some point or multiple points, it splashes down into the water, like a shoot the shoot, and then floats because it's you know both a coaster and a boat, um, so it floats like a log flume or shoot the shoot. Um, this is another ride type that I have never experienced, but it's not one that I've been like, man, I really want to experience something like that. From all the videos I've seen, um, and I know it's hard to judge something without actually having experienced it, but to me it does really feel like in trying to be both a coaster and a water ride, it kind of fails at doing both. Um, but I know some people do enjoy these, so maybe I just need to wait until I have a chance to experience them. I was hoping if Carowinds did ever get something like this, it would be uh, Mock Rides Power Splash. I know a lot of people have talked about that. That's like Pulsar at Wallaby, Belgium, um, or Aquaman at um, over Texas. Because A, that would give Carowinds a second launch coaster, coaster, um, and B, they are pretty compact and presumably affordable rides. It would leave a lot of space and budget for Carowinds to get something else as well. The main problem with Carowinds right now and why I was almost sure this was going to come up is that Carowinds does not have a single water ride in the dry park, which is just absolutely crazy, um, especially with how hot it can get in North Carolina during the spring, summer, and even fall. It's really nice to have a water ride to go cool off on. That's why at so many parks the water rides are the longest waits uh, the middle of those summer days. So the fact that Carowinds, especially given its location in the climate in North Carolina, doesn't have a water ride is crazy. And they do have the attached water park, Carolina Harbor, is included with admission. Um, but going and changing uh, and doing a water park is, is very different than doing a water attraction at a theme park. It requires a lot more effort in planning to go into the water park rather than just hopping on a River Rapids ride or something to cool off real quick. Um, so basically what I'm saying is it's not necessarily a, a great option for a lot of people to go cool off. It's not a replacement for having water rides in the dry park. And also the water park's not open the whole year round. The water park sure didn't help me cool off the one time I went in October and it was like 80, 90 degrees and everybody was dying and sweating and there were no water rides in the park. So Carowinds definitely needs to add a water ride at some point and I knew they were going to try to get away with adding a water uh, getting a water ride at a coaster in the same package. The thing that really sticks out to me here is that it talks about a racing boat, which A, tells me that this ride would be at least a little bit themed, which I like. I'm sure the dive coaster would be decently themed as well. I mean, we saw, see, um, what was it? Iron, Iron Menace, that's still a dumb name, but Iron Menace at Dorney Park this year is, is pretty well themed, and Cedar Fair seems to be pushing for at least competent levels of theming on their rides, which is good. Um, but this specifically mentions Racing Boat, which makes me wonder if it would have some cool Racing Boat theme. They could do some cool stuff with that. I also like, you know, here, again, this may just be a generic render, but I like how the boats seem to duel each other as long as they're ditched, dispatched at a close enough interval that hopefully they would be able to keep. And if they were doing a Racing Boat thing, it would be pretty cool to actually, you know, race somebody else a little bit. Not that it would be dual-tracked, but... You, you know what I mean. It's, so it's hard to judge this concept having never actually ridden a water coaster, um, but just from my uninformed opinions um, on water coasters, I would almost rather, just looking at these two concepts, and I'm sure there will be more, but just looking at these two, I'd almost rather them get the Giga Coaster, the Giga Dive, 
as their roller coaster and just get a small log flume or something else as their water ride down the line or right away and get the, the Giga Dive later. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the water coaster concept, but who knows, maybe I'll ride one one day and it'll be amazing. And maybe if they do get this, they'll do something crazy with the racing boat theming and really blow me away. Hey, who knows? All right, on to the next concept, and here's here's the real good stuff right here. Family Thrill Coaster. Embark on the ultimate out and back coaster that stretches an astonishing 4,500 feet, claiming the title as the longest family coaster on Earth. Big Bear Mountain could never. So this concept would have three launches topping out at 55 miles per hour, which is pretty fast uh, for a family coaster, but I assume it would just make up for that with some not as intense elements. Near misses in the terrain, some nice airtime hills, racing toward the dead end track six stories high. Okay, so it would have a vertical, or not vertical, it looks like from this image a, you know, just high grade spike, I guess you could say, um, where it will then roll back. It looks similar to like what the um, family boomerangs have. Okay, so I'm a little lost here, because it's a 4,500 foot family coaster with three launches. But then it says um, that you, you'll hit a dead end track, so like a spike six stories in the air, and then you'll, you'll go through a backwards free fall, and then go back through the track, this time in reverse. So that makes me think that what we're looking at right now is like a 2,250 foot uh, family boomerang, and they're marking it 4,500 because it goes through the track twice. So I feel like on this, um, as much as at first I was like, this is the best of these options, um, I do feel like I need a little more details to understand what this ride even is. Yeah, I can't tell. This looks like an actual picture of a ride somewhere. Um, these, I can't tell if they're computer renders or pictures of a ride somewhere. Um, they might be computer renders, um, in which case we can kind of get a better idea of what kind of ride we're looking at. So I've gone ahead and tried to, to blow up this image big. It's just not a very high quality render. Um, and I don't know how much stock we can even put in this anyway. Um, but I've noticed some interesting things like in all of these renders, for some reason, the, uh, the back car of each train is facing backwards. That's something. That doesn't really matter that much in my opinion for what I'm just trying to understand what this ride is but it's something. Um, I'm trying to look at the track layout. That's why I, was, I wish we had a higher res um, image here. Because what I see here is a split out of the station, like a track switch out of the station. And from there, the ride, there's two different courses. If you go to the right, it's a complete circuit back to the station. If you go to the left, it's up into the spike and back down. So I am just uh, confused um, as to what this ride even is. It could be a choose-your-adventure type thing, where you choose to go the full circuit route, or you choose to go the spike, or maybe you don't know which one you're going to get until the train goes. Or it could be like a normal two-train ride. You dispatch, you go clear up the spike, then you ride backwards over the track switch, but then you take this whole part of the ride backwards, which that just doesn't make sense to me. So, um... I don't know. I'm just... I'm very confused on, on this attraction. <laughs> On paper, I want this to be the one that I recommend the most personally because, I mean, from a business standpoint, um, family launch coasters are all the hype right now. You have the Intamin Shuttle coasters going to all the SeaWorld parks. Um, you had Big Bear Mountain this year at Dollywood or last year at Dollywood. Um, probably some other notable examples as well. Oh, there's uh, Penguin Trek. It's also at SeaWorld. Anyways, from a business perspective, I feel like um, family launch coaster is, like, the way to go. Um... I just don't understand what this ride is enough to know if it's actually 4,500 feet, if it's like a boomerang, family boomerang type situation. I just don't know what the heck we're looking at here. Before I move on here, I also forgot that um, Carowinds, from what we saw from a leak recently, they are getting a small family launch coaster for, I think, next year in the Planet Snoopy section, but that would be definitely toward the lower end um, of the thrill spectrum, and this one is... Um, kind of on the upper end of the family thrill spectrum. So I think both have space to exist in the same park. I would still really like to see something like this, especially if Carewinds wants to keep pushing their brand of being the um, 
Carolinas' family entertainment uh, destination. I think it would do them well to have a, a wider variety of, of roller coasters. Pretty much all of their roller coasters are thrill coasters. They have plenty of those. In terms of family ones, I think we just have Woodstock Express and the Mine Train, I can't remember the name of, which is not not a bad lineup, but they could definitely use some more family coasters for the kind of park they say they want to be. And also I see on here a lot of kind of adventure theming, which I think looks pretty awesome. I'm not really sure what area of the park they would put it in to fit in with this kind of uh, adventure theming, but you definitely want theming like this on a family launch coaster to really take it uh, to the next level in terms of presentation and add some fun factor without having to add a bunch of thrill to it. Okay, so next here we have the first one that's not a coaster at all. It's a super flume. Um, and yeah, I think I'd rather see this on the water coaster, but let's let's go ahead and look at it. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely something I would prefer over the water coaster. It's just a traditional log flume with modern technology, it appears. Um, I don't know exactly where the station... Oh yeah, so the station's like right here. So it looks like you'll come out uh, through this little uh, pond section. It looks pretty nice. Uh, then you'll head up the main lift hill, and it made a point that at the top of every lift hill, there's actually a turntable that moves you from the lift hill over to the drop, um, which is kind of a cool little novelty thing. It helps them kind of create this aesthetic thing going on, where they call it a mountain. Then you go that drop into like a little double down thing. So after the first double down drop, you kind of come around here, and then you have uh, something going on here that leads into like a uh, backwards drop. Yeah, so that's reference right here. I don't really understand. I guess the boats go up the lift hill, the main lift hill backwards, and then get turned forward um, at the top here. It's another situation where the the, uh, the whole description and stuff's a little bit too vague to tell exactly in detail what's going on here, um, but point is for this one. Um, it's a log flume, and a modern log flume um, with the modern technology looks Similar to something like Chiapas at uh, Fantasialand, which looks awesome. So I'd be really happy to see this. Most of the log flumes we have in the U.S. are, are very old um, and are using older technology, which is cool um, in like a classic kind of way, but I'd love to see. I mean, there have been a lot of advances made in log flume technology that we just haven't seen over here and a lot of parts of Europe, too, because people just aren't really building log flumes anymore. So I think this could be a really cool attraction for Carowinds to give them the water ride they need. Um, but also really stand out uh, by doing things that no other log flume in the country is doing right now. So as much as many coaster enthusiasts may hate to hear me say it, I think out of these options, I would most prefer the, the super flume. Um, I think Carowinds needs to fill in their water ride thing before they, they do anything else. I know the last time we got a thrill coaster was Copperhead Strike in 2019, but that's not that long ago in the grand scheme of things, and you will get another thrill coaster at this park at some point. We need a, a water ride though, they need a water ride, so. Oh, and uh, one more thing I kind of missed is that it does say um, the world's tallest plunge, implying this would be um, the world's tallest log flume, or the tallest log flume in some specific category that decided to claim the record. The point is it would be a, a pretty tall log flume, which is pretty cool. I was kind of hoping they'd do a little bit of something with theming. I was especially excited when they called it a uh, like a mountain several times, because I thought they could do something cool with like mountain theming, but they may not have that in the budget if this is as tall of a flume as they're suggesting it is. Also, maybe it's just bad concept art, but I'm trying to figure out how the boats go from this, you know, transition to backwards section and then they end up forwards again to go up the main lift and then like right here where this drop is uh, occurring um, doesn't seem to match up to anywhere on this actual concept art so it's probably I'm probably looking into this stuff a little bit too uh, too deeply they're just ideas yeah so I guess that's pretty much it um, so again without looking into them too deeply we have the Giga, the Giga Dive Coaster, we have the Water Coaster, we have a Family Thrill Coaster, and the Super Flume, uh, Log Flume, so there we go. But I think out of these concepts, uh, for Carowinds specifically, I would most like to see the Super Flume, followed by the Family Thrill Coaster second, the uh, Giga Dive Coaster third, Water Coaster last. I know having the Giga Dive Coaster third is probably frustrating for some of you all, but I like to look at the whole picture for these parks and what's really going to help uh, help their ride lineups 
uh, in total what's going to create a well-rounded experience as much as a lot of foozies hate to hear it every ride being a big thrill coaster is just not a good way to operate a theme park in my opinion and i enjoy having some different types of rides i can ride from time to time i enjoy a good family thrill coaster that doesn't feel like it's trying to kill me the entire time so although i will say i feel like the super flumen family thrill coaster are a little interchangeable for me because what would i most want to see out of these as much as the like it, like if all other factors just didn't matter at all if the fact that carowinds didn't have a water ride was just irrelevant um i, I mean Giga Dive Coaster sounds cool, but I'd still probably rather see the Family Thrill Coaster. I would be most excited to ride a Family Thrill Coaster at Carowinds, so I would have that as number one for me, um, but I really feel like the park needs a water ride, so that's why I'm putting the Super Flume as one. So yeah, here's how I, how I voted here, but... Alright, and that was it. That was the survey. It was just some demographic information after that. But I did want to real quick just pull up a map real quick of Carowinds from the Carowinds website. It is a pretty crappy map, but it's the one that they give on the website. So is what it is. But I was going to show where these attractions might go. So that, I mean, they could go anywhere. Who knows? But the two main plots of land that are being pointed at for a, a major new ride of the caliber shown um, in the survey would be either right here near the front entrance by Fury's Lift Hill, which is where the River Rapids ride used to be. Actually, most of the troughs and stuff are still there. It hasn't really been removed yet, but it's been permanently closed for uh, quite a hot second now. So previous raft ride plot here. And then there's this area over here that used to be the Dinosaurs Alive walkthrough attraction, I believe, and that's now a completely empty plot of land as well so either one of these can be used um, obviously they could always do something like move or remove some other attraction somewhere and shove it in somewhere else uh, there's some like general backstage stuff going on over here they could relocate and build something over here but i think everyone kind of agrees it's going to be going this ride would be going in one of these two plots i think what i'm kind of thinking and, and other people kind of agree on that if it's water related probably going right here where the raft ride used to be um, and if it's the family throw coaster or the giga dive probably over here i know that's kind of just like oh yeah the water ride goes where the raft ride used to be but i don't know it really does just make more sense to me with the giga dive it would be weird to me to have a 300 foot lift hill right next to another 300 foot lift hill so i think you sp spread out the skyline a little bit stick that over here the family throw coaster feels like it would make more sense in this area. Although actually, come to think of it, I could see the family throw coaster here. Um, there's a lot of like foliage and stuff going through this area. So a well-themed um, family launch coaster might be pretty cool right here, even if it does kind of clash with Fury a little bit. Uh, so I think the family throw coaster could go in either one of these plots. Um, and realistically, the water rides could go in either one of these plots, but it would make sense to me to put the water ride where the water ride used to be. The Giga Dive is the one that I think is really tied to this plot. I don't think a Giga Dive makes sense right next to Fury. I think it would have to be over here. But yeah, who, who knows, really. So anyways, I'm tired. I'm going to go get ready to go to bed. But those are my um, first impressions uh, discussion on the, these concepts for new Carowinds attraction. If the King's Dominion and Canada's Wonderland surveys from last year are any indication, then we will see one of these rides, one of these four get selected to be Carowinds' next major attraction probably in 2027, maybe 2026 if we're lucky. Um, so it will be interesting to see which one of these options they end up moving forward with. If you have any thoughts on any of these attractions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to engage and start a discussion with y'all on what Carowinds' next attraction could be, um, what y'all think of these concepts. If you understand what the heck is going on in the family throw one please let me know because i'm confused and yeah otherwise i am really excited that i'm actually going to carowinds a week from today i have not been in a little over a year now so i'm pretty excited to go back um, next week so it is funny that this happened to pop up right then um so yeah i'm gonna go get some sleep but hopefully it won't be too long till you see the next video on coasting the planet i know at this point i have not yet uploaded you know, the last few 
vlogs I've recorded from, you know, Dollywood opening weekend and then I actually went to Universal over spring break for two days. So that was pretty hype. I've just been really busy with school and stuff, but hopefully you will see the upload schedule kind of returning to uh, something more regular within the next few weeks and there'll be some fun coaster content for you all, theme park related stuff. You can tell I'm tired because I'm just kind of rambling. So anyways, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, if Dollywood, Carowinds, and Universal Vlogs sound fun to you, or if you just want to see more cool discussion videos like this, definitely be sure to leave a like so that I know that you'll enjoy this kind of stuff. I like doing this, I just usually don't have time just to sit down and, and do this. So until next time, I hope to catch a ride with you again very soon.